In May, the UK government lifted restrictions on police stop and search powers. The letter sent to police forces by the Home Secretary outlined the easing of restrictions on the use of tactics under Section 60 of the Criminal Justice and Public Order Act. These are what the changes made involve. The rank of officer that can authorise stop and search powers will now be dropped from senior officer to an inspector, which a superintendent will now be able to authorise an extension to. Officers will now only need to anticipate that serious violence may occur as opposed to will occur in order to authorise stop and search powers. Authorising officers will no longer need to communicate in advance that they will be conducting stop and search, and the length of time that the powers can be in effect will be extended from 15 to 24 hours, while the maximum length of the extension will increase from 39 to 48 hours. Stop and search powers are controversial because of a concern that they disproportionately affect black and brown communities. Campaign groups have warned that easing restrictions on their use could increase discrimination. Limitations to Section 60 powers had even been put in place in 2014, after two police reports found that stop and search powers were being used indiscriminately against black communities. Hello and welcome to Lot 49. In light of a previously mentioned event, today I will be talking about legal observers, specifically where they came from and what they do. The late 60s was a time of civil unrest. 1968 saw the beginning of the Northern Ireland conflict in the UK, while across the Atlantic, civil rights and anti-war protests popped up across the US. Due to police and military violence against Catholics in Belfast, numerous local groups banded together to form the Central Citizens Defence Committee. This organisation tried to reduce tension between the British forces and the Catholic communities, while also trying to advise the population on how to stay safe. Meanwhile, the police response to protests in New York and at the Democratic National Convention prompted the National Lawyers Guild into action. They established the Legal Observers Certification Program, which provided formal training to volunteers on how to supply legal advice to protesters. However, trying to keep the police in line was not limited to those with a degree, as the Black Panthers used community observers to monitor how black communities in the US were policed in the 1970s. While in the UK, the 70s and 80s saw the continued use of observer teams in Northern Ireland and the development of training programmes and the formalisation of standards among observers. Aided by developments in video recording technology and media access, the 90s saw the growth of locally organised cop watch chapters in the US. These chapters partnered with street outreach and legal rights projects, and together they were able to hold police accountable and discourage the illegal use of force and discriminatory stops. Back in the UK, 2009 and 2010 saw the formation of organisations like Netpol and the Green and Black Cross. These not only provided legal observers and training, but also wrote reports and campaigned against oppressive policing, such as data gathering, intimidation and excessive use of force, provided legal support to protesters, and ran movement support and solidarity projects. These new organisations increased the supply of legal observers, but they were insufficient to cover the surge in Black Lives Matter protests in 2020. The increased demand led to the creation of a network of black and brown lawyers called the Black Protest Legal Support, BPLS UK. In the first week of June, they were able to field 100 lawyers as legal observers. 
consisting of actual lawyers they could give out formal advice to protesters. In 2021, four of their observers were arrested at protests and fined for breaching COVID restrictions. The arrests set off a legal challenge for argued that as legal observers, they ought to have been covered by an exemption. In May, the charges were dropped, with the Metropolitan Police formally accepting the role of legal observers. Since then, the group has expanded its number to over 250 lawyers and has successfully raised over £70,000 through crowdfunding. They continue to provide free legal advice and representation to UK Black Lives Matter activists. Away from court cases, they counteract racialized policing and systemic discrimination through strategic litigation, legal support, policy work, and of course, fielding legal observers at Black Lives Matter and related protests. In the UK, a legal observer is someone that observes the police during demonstrations. They take detailed notes of the way the demonstration is policed and give out basic information to demonstrators about their legal rights in the situation. If force is used by the police or there are arrests, the observers collect witness statements that can help to establish the facts in court. They are there to support the protesters and only need to gather evidence that will help them, not the police. However, while wearing the legal observer vest, they are not allowed to join in the protest. They are not lawyers, police negotiators or spokespeople for the protests and they have no special legal status. While often respected by the police, they can still be arrested for obstruction if they get in the way. Their key roles are to record assaults on protesters, minor arrests, inform protesters of their basic legal rights, act as deterrent to police misbehavior, and monitor the policing of a protest especially tactics such as stop and search and kettling. Over in the US, there is more emphasis on formal training and standards for legal observers, but they otherwise perform the exact same duties. Anyway, that's it for this video. I hope you have found it informative. Links and citations to the sources used can be found down in the description. As with all YouTube channels, please feel free to leave a like, comment, share and subscribe. And until next time, have a good evening.